to the big big show my name is Matteo and I got a beer I got a drink so let's get to it right now today's beer snow day now snow day is a uh, beer by New Belgium many of you know New Belgium because of fat tire uh, my favorite their summer ones is the uh, lawnmower ale now of course we're still in winter so of course I'm still hitting a lot of the uh, darker beers a lot of times when it comes to winter ales and whatnot um, a lot of time when it comes to the winter ales, there's going to be a, uh, a lot more dark, heavier beers toward because for some reason in the middle of cold winter, people like drinking really dark, heavy, delicious beers. So here's what I got to say about the beer. It's a, uh, an interesting mix of flavors in this one. There's kind of like a coffee, like a caramel coffee taste to it with like this weird kind of as it like sits more there's like a little citrusy taste or something it's weird kind of it's like if somebody made you like a um, caramel macchiato and then like put a lime in it it's not a bad beer the coffee caramel coffee part is really good the odd aftertaste makes it a little strange but I don't think I hate it Anyway, not a bad beer, snow day, if you're snowed in somewhere, although if you're like Texas and it's 72 degrees outside, it hardly feels like time for a snow day beer, but uh, I would, uh, I guess I'll recommend it. So of course, uh, I had already put up last week's episode, and then what happens? It's officially announced that J.J. Abrams will be directing Star Wars. For a long time, I thought that this was a load of bullcrap. And I never thought that this would happen. It was like people who who were talking about Joss leading up Star Wars. I was like, um, he's already got a big movie opening 2015. You've probably heard of it. Avengers 2. So there's no way Joss was going to do it. And then you bring in J.J. Abrams and you're like, um, look, Mr. J.J. Abrams, you just did Star Trek and I don't think that you would want to, you know, piss off more Star Trek people by jumping aboard Star Wars. And plus that's, you know, you've kind of been there, done that before. You've already rebooted a franchise. Not rebooted. I mean, he's not going to reboot Star Wars, but... So I really thought that for sure that uh, this was not going to happen. And I thought it was really ridiculous. And then sure enough, Thursday, a lot of very important people came out saying that this was going to happen, uh, including Variety. And then uh, sure enough, on Friday, it was announced J.J. Abrams taking over Star Wars. Now, this isn't bad to me. This is actually going to be kind of cool because, you know, if... J.J. did anything with Star Trek, he made it more like Star Wars. Agreed that he didn't make Star Trek mythic. I, I mean, Star Trek never has been mythic, so it'll be interesting to see if he can create that mythos, or continue that mythos that George Lucas did, but he certainly did make a lot more action-oriented, less cerebral version of Star Trek. I, I think that a lot of people outside of uh, Star Trek fandom, and even a lot of fandom agree that Star Trek is a lot more cerebral, it's a lot more thought-provoking, it's a lot more dealing with issues. And certainly that's not the way that J.J. Abrams' Star Trek was. The most interesting thing is, is that J.J. is kind of used to having his control over everything. You know, even with Star Trek, uh, they wanted to do another Star Trek TV show, and J.J. was like, eh, let's not do that right now. And then, you know, they wanted to do a whole, a whole slew of comic books, and they did one with IDW, which is pretty fantastic. And even that uh, comic book is overseen by Robert Orkai, who we all know is one of J.J.'s main writers. So the comic book has ties to what J.J. is doing. Uh, in fact, this week, he's got Countdown to Into Darkness already being released in comic book form, so I can't wait to read that just to see uh, where that's leading us and to see if it ties in with the rest of the comic books, too. I'll report on that next week. But with all of that, 
it'll be interesting now to see JJ let go a little bit and kind of put his future into the hands of not only Kathleen Kennedy uh, and Michael Arndt, who's writing with, you know, Lawrence Kasdan. Uh, you know, that was so awesome to see because Lawrence Kasdan, as you'll remember, wrote the original script for Raiders of the Lost Ark, arguably one of the best Indiana Jones flicks, as well as Empire Strikes Back, which too is arguably one of the best Star Wars movies. People say about that, you know, it's like, which one's better, Empire Strikes Back or Star Wars? Obviously, without Star Wars being as amazing as it was and doing its setup like it did, Empire could not have been as fulfilling. It's kind of like what people say about Godfather and Godfather 2. Many people will say Godfather 2 is so much better than Godfather 1, but without the amazing core and without the amazing story and everything that happened in Godfather 1, Godfather 2 couldn't have been as wonderful. So it's kind of the same thing with Empire and Star Wars. It's hard to really say which one's better. I mean, if you think about it, Star Wars was, you know, just this whole new epic thing that nobody had ever seen before. And so to be able to pull off that amazing sequel with the help of Lawrence Kasdan and, of course, George's story and everything, much like we have here. So Michael Arndt writing the screenplay, Lawrence Kasdan consulting on that screenplay based on a treatment by George Lucas. And you know George Lucas isn't just going to hand over this thing. You know, uh, I'm sure J.J. will have a, you know, a number he can call him if he has any questions. And Kathleen Kennedy has continued to say that he's still going to be the Yoda, the mentor of how to, pr how to produce and make Star Wars movies. So I really think that this is really going to help the mythology of the Star Wars films continue. That should be really great. I'm pretty excited about that. Random, random thoughts at random. Every Monday, uh, well, every Sunday and Monday, my roommate, Brittany, uh, you can follow her on Twitter at BCBetch, B-E-T-C-H. Uh, she spends part of her afternoons uh, watching old TV. She watches a little 90210. She watches a little Saved by the Bell because, you know, on your day off, mindless TV is sometimes the best way to go. Now, for me, Saved by the Bell has always sort of been in the periphery. Like, I've watched episodes, uh, you know, throughout my entire... But I think but I was probably just a little bit too old for the, by the time Saved by the Bell hit. And plus, at the time, I was much more into, like, darker, heavier stuff. You know, I was super into Twin Peaks and Next Generation and the, those kinds of things. So, you know, really Saved by the Bell was sort of... It was in my radar. I knew it was existing, and uh, who doesn't love that theme song? It'd be one of those shows that, like, on a mindless afternoon while I'm eating a bowl of cereal, I'll watch. In fact, <laughs> I'm going to pull this out. Uh, I have a really funny video that I shot just one summer break. I was really bored one afternoon. And so I shot this all in camera. Uh, there was no editing done to this. Anyway, this is sort of a Saved by the Bell Ferris Bueller mashup. So hopefully I can find that and show that to you now. But for me, the funny thing about Saved by the Bell was that there was always sort of this like Ginger Marianne, uh, Betty Veronica thing going on with Jesse and Kelly Kapowski. Now, I, I don't know why it's obvious that I love Kelly Kapowski. But I've always liked Kelly anyway because, I mean, I think that she's a bit cuter than Jesse. I mean, come on, let's be honest. I mean, even in Showgirls, she's still not that good looking. Good body, but just not that good looking. But also, too, Kelly was nicer, you know, where Jesse was just, you know, kind of snobby and, you know, she was smart. It's not so much that she was smart that bothers me. It's the fact that she was kind of snobby about being smart, too. So uh, I was much more a big, more Kelly Kapowski fan. And then, of course, they did the one movie where I think they go to Hawaii to get married. I think that's what video was. When all of a sudden, Kelly Kapowski had boobs. And we we're like, huh. Kapowski, she's got boobs now. Oh my god, awesome! And then this picture hit the internet, and this one, and oh my god, this one, and cheers rang out around the internet. Tad has tits. She really didn't, you know, back in the show, and not putting anything against her. And I'd still, you know, well, that's kind of creepy now, me saying that I'd still sleep with her, but. Kelly Kapowski at the time. She was my she was my girl anyway. Anyway, moving on. So those pictures came out and we were all like, oh my god, Tiffany Amethyst is so much hotter now! Because uh, we were uh, the internet and those are the kinds of things we said. So I don't know if you saw this, but recently Tiffany Amethyst put out another photo shoot and it looked like this. 
Tiffany Amber Thiessen, excuse me, now just Tiffany Thiessen, at 38 years old, oh my god, you still look amazing. Who doesn't love some good Kelly Kapowski, right? All right, put it up here. Ah, uh, that's lame. I'm not going to do that. Well, that's it, everybody. I'm going to wrap it up this week. Only got this much left of the beer to drink, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Well, that's it. My name's Matteo, and uh, as you saw, I just drank another beer. Thank you.